But I think it's very important that somebody discloses this information to you because as of yet, I've never seen anybody disclose this information. And even people going through modern character design courses today are designing for the industry as it is at the moment, which eliminates this stage because nobody really does this kind of uh, hand-drawn animation at that level anymore. But it's coming back to that with Klaus. So it's good that I prime you and for when you know the time comes you're going to have you're going to understand the process now i'm not going to really push to try and make it look like my daughter because that would be extremely um you know, hard work that I would have to do offline. So I'm just going to go from my memory of what I think and then use some of those graphical tricks that I know of the, the, the Disney process to get something looking good and nice here. So I'm going to look at this and I'm not going to start drawing over it straight away. OK, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to think, OK, well, if I'm going to slightly make the facial proportions a little bit different, uh, I want her to look younger. This just kind of looks like uh, a bigger head on a smaller body, uh, you know, which is which could make is, is a cheap kind of naff straight to video way of making somebody look young. We don't want that. Um, we want to have uh, we want to have it more uh, where it's kind of like uh, proportionate. So this it's almost still there's some still some childlike quality to her. Uh, obviously, this is youthful, but it's it's not it's as I said, it's it's easy. It's I want to push it a little bit more. So if we if we go on to hair, one thing I remember about Glenn Keane's Ariel, for example, is he always said, like, I, I, I haven't drawn it for years. So excuse me if I don't get it right. He always I remember in one of his model sheets, he said that Ariel's eye line was two thirds of the way down her face. OK, so something like I think it was something like this. OK, uh, where it was. And then over here, this this kind of um, how did the shape go again? So it's, it's this shape. Yeah, th this kind of shape was what we had going on with with Ariel yeah so it was it was something like that so immediately when we look this is the mastery of Glenn Keane you see so many people take this stuff for granted saying oh yeah well you know all those films in the 90s they all look like you know those characters they were generic well what happened is is Mr. Keane created this formula which was just amazing and it was just the mo it, it worked so well because the silhouette of the character was able to immediately give this youthful quality. Now, what I absolutely love about that aerial uh, concept is is the massive hair, okay? Is the massive hair. But I can't do that with this character. <laughs> and I love massive hair. I'm a man of the 80s. Uh, one of the reasons is, is she's, a, she's, she's not going to be wearing a hood in this scene, but she does wear a hood a lot. And uh, I want the hair to be tied back and a little bit more old fashioned in that regard. So I'm not going to be doing that. Unfortunately, it's a nice it's a nice trick. And you'll always have a uh, you, you'll always have a prettier character when you do something like that, because you've got so much to to frame the face with. So whether it's that for Ariel or that for Jasmine, you know, you can really kind of fl frame the face nicely. So. I'm going to try that. I'm maybe not going to go all the way two thirds of the way down, but I'm going to think, OK, well, let's think about um, let's think about having uh, having the character's eye line a little bit lower. OK, so something like that. I'm not going to do an up angle. I'm just going to keep it straight like that. So I'm going to think about that. Now, I'm going to go a little bit different here. I, I love my big fat eyebrows. Uh, Jennifer Connelly in Labyrinth. She was 15, 16, I think. She at the time she had massive eyebrows. My daughter has massive eyebrows. I love massive eyebrows. So I'm going to give my character massive eyebrows. I'm going to give her those more exotic eye shapes, which is, you know, what, uh, which is the eye shape of that I use for my wife character design that you see me often doing um, in my uh, personal content. So 
which is what I have done here anyway. So I'm taking this and I'm just making it uh, a little bit more youthful and childlike. So now uh, already I'm kind of liking that a little bit better. So now I'm going to think about the nose. Okay, so I'm going to put a, a I'm going to put the nose a little bit wrong here. I'm, it's not too far off what I've got, but I'm just refining that. I'm just finding these shapes that I think that I'm going to start animating with. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna have the mouth coming in here like like this. So I'm looking at what I'm doing and I'm just starting to create my shapes around it. Now my daughter has a little dimple in her lower lip, so I'm gonna throw that in there too. Okay, so let's have that. So already I've got a face here that I'm thinking is is a, is a, is nicer. It's nicer than what I had um, with my design that I had played around with here. This was a little too young. Uh, I think the original idea was to have her younger, but I, I, I'm thinking I'm going to go for more um, Little Mermaid, uh, sort of like teenage, uh, because I think, you know, the those Disney films were, 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 the, were extremely strong pieces of storytelling. And I think that um, if it ain't broke don't fix it so that's why i'm going for that um so we have uh the the neck there so i'm making this drawing for reference before i start animating and then i'm gonna really see if these shapes are gonna work okay it's 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 very important that we do this now i'm gonna bring this a little closer as i work out the hair design okay so the hair design is something I'm going to think about. I'm going to think, well, we got the crown of, you know, we've got her frontal portion of the face, which is going to be framing all this. I'm just going to come straight along here. Now, my daughter has this cleft in her widow's peak, I think they call it. I'm just going to do something like that. And I'm going to give her a sort of parting of the hair. Now, I like what I've done there, but I think I'm going to, I'm going to, tone it down a little bit I'm not gonna make it as big I'm gonna make it tighter on the face I'm gonna bring this out to the side here and I'm gonna think about what this hair would look like untied so I, I want her to have fairly thick hair like this now I gotta think about okay well what if she's gonna tie it up so let's let's take this and let's do something like this so you see how I'm working out these shapes before I've even started trying to have a go and draw on top of this and start animating all of this, I'm working out shapes that I feel are going to be appealing shapes for me to, to think about when I'm making the animation. This is where I say the drawing and the animation separate from one another for a while and then we go on to, then, 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 then they reunite um, as we start to go on and then make it all work now I'm gonna break up this hair by putting something like this in here some frame it I'm gonna frame it like that and do something like that you wouldn't see that hair on the other side so I'm um, what I'll do next okay is once I've done that I won't jump in I know as animators especially if you just jump uh, starting you're gonna go right yes I'm liking the feel of this I'm gonna jump in and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna draw on top of all of this and and it's gonna look great and it's gonna look fantastic what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to just give myself I'm just going to go in there and tidy it up just for my own sake to really kind of work these shapes out so the eye is, is curled at the top and comes down okay curled at the top and comes down and then we're going to straighten it and then sit it on the eye line it's almost like a square shape curled at the top and comes down and, and this i'm going to curl out like this around here so as that curled at the top and comes down that gives me an opportunity to throw in these lashes i'm going to rather than give one flick I'm going to throw in some separate lashes in there, bring it into old school time like Don Bluth, Princess Daphne and stuff like that. OK, so now I'm going to just uh, put the eyelid by just going around the shape once more. And we're going to throw in these pupil irises, excuse me, and then the highlight and the pupil I'll throw in in there like that. Yes. OK. Now the eyebrows is going to be like the shape of the eye sockets. Okay, so if we look at the skull, okay, 
the usual that I always like to talk about okay we have this front portion of the face the skull is usually these big massive sockets and then you have the nasal bone sitting on there big massive sockets coming in here like this okay and the mass uh, the mastoid process auditory ear canal zygomatic mask okay then you have the um the vulmer the ethnoid and the nasal cavity the maxilla which comes here why am i telling you all this is very important because the chin which sits around at the back of the mastoid process is the sternocleidomastoid muscle muscle uh, uh, muscle and then the jaw will come on the on hair like this so all of this exists in this but then the nose okay i don't often talk about this but because in 2d it we cheat it it's a graphic shape okay so the nose has kind of got this septum cartilage which comes here and it's like a frame and then they join together at the bottom you've got to think of it like a frame and then along here along here is your nasal uh, bone and then you've got like the cartilage which sits in here and you've got one that sits around here and one that sits around here and then you've got all the tissue around here which sort of fills in the nose and it's the same for the ear you see many times you see me drawing a cartoon ear like this okay um, and all this but again you want to think about here's the mastoid process hair so if I make this shape now her hair is going to be hidden by the ear so I'm gonna take this time to just share this with you just so you understand because we got to put in a little bit more detail it's gonna look a little funny if we put an ear like that on a cartoon a pretty little cartoon girl okay so we need to understand what happens with our outer ear we've got basically this helix which frames out the side which is all cartilage and then it comes in here like this then we have the tagus and the lobule and this is the antitagus okay and then we've got the ant we've got in here the concha which is the hole and then we've got the the, the frame of that concha is the anti-helix okay and then we come down here and we have this kind of thing i don't often talk about this as of yet i'm saving this for the anatomy archive okay but it's important that you understand rather than knowing how a cartoon ear goes which is the way i used to do it um early on in my career just memorizing that if you want to take your design super further you really need to understand these things because that's how you can make the graphic shapes so let me just illustrate what I'm going to do, okay? You're going to watch me do it with the nose because if you look even at Disney girls, at Don Bluth girls, at all of those kind of character designs, often, you know, nowadays they try to make the nose, uh, they try to give them these very realistic little button noses and then things like that, you know, because of the CG, they do that okay but if you look at the, the 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 traditional designs okay where we just we just do something like this and we favor a side and then you can you can change it you can then depending on the bridge of the nose you can have it like this so the reason we do stuff like that is we favor the side but you got to understand which part is the nasal bridge and which part is the cartilage when you're drawing if you just make shapes like this um out of your own imagination you're going to find that you're going to be very ill-informed and that's where you're going to lose structure in your drawing and it's the same with the ear um, right so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to go back and I'm going to go back and continue with this uh, character so the the eyebrows are going to sit on top as I said where the eye sockets are gonna be so again here's where the nasal bridge is okay halfway along her face is where her nasal bridge is basically gonna be and I'm just gonna play it safe and do that cartilage coming in and do the one coming underneath to kind of join the two and then bring in the side like that so you can see by making this shape here I'm working out the the alar cartilage okay of the nose so now uh, the mouth, I'm just going to skim over that. You're going to watch me do all this again uh, when I'm animating it. So don't worry if you think I'm talking about it going, and now I'll do this and now I'll do a bit like that. This is just a preparation for me to, 
to look at the shapes that I'm wanting to make to when I start having a go at animating. So now I'm coming around here and I'm making the the cheek, but now I'm giving her a little bit of a chin, okay, coming off and coming onto that jaw. I'm finding that that's a little bit too thin. Uh, I want to keep some puppy fat on this to keep it looking young. Keep some puppy fat coming here. Now we're going to talk about that ear, okay? So we're going to make a shape like this. And I'm going to think about the helix as a frame, okay? And the lobe, okay? And I'm just going to make a line here for the concha and the anti-helix. Okay, so that's going to make my life very, very easy. So the ear, maybe I can put another little one in there, but I personally like to keep it simple to keep away the, you know, you've got the superior and inferior cross of the um, of the helix. I like to keep it simple uh, by just doing something like that. Right, so here we have the neck. And now I'm going to simply use the framing of, that I figured out, okay, coming down here. And you're going to watch how I'm making a mind map of these shapes. So when I start animating the character, um, I'm not going to be in the dark guessing, okay? And then I'll be figuring out what works and what doesn't work and what we can do to make it better as we go along the way. Right, so I'm going to delete the, the roughs and have a look at that. Okay, so there we go. Right, so that's what I, I, I'm having at the moment uh, that I'm going to think about, that I'm going to have a little play with and um, and and start trying to, to make uh, the character come to uh, be more like this. So I'm not going to, as I'm going, I'm not going to kill myself trying to hit that model. Okay. This is the important thing. I'm, I'm experimenting, but those, so I'm not setting that in stone either. Okay. I'm experimenting. So I'm going to bring that down to a light gray and I'm going to start the process over again. Okay. So let's start the process over again. Now, the first thing I'm going to do um, is I'm going to do a whole silhouette of the character before I begin so I can have an idea of of what um, I remember the two thirds down as I said you know this is challenging trying to do this live actually so what today's lecture was just a recap is we don't just go away and then take our animation and just start drawing that on top or we don't make a 360 turnaround of that we 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 play we experiment we start thinking about how we can push it so we made this drawing here um, and then from that drawing we started to think about animatable shapes that could try that that we can start using uh, to familiarize ourselves to find our character's identity and that's what we did. That's what you've watched me do today. And um, this lecture is going to go into the AMB Animation Real Animator Training Library. It's going to go into this particular archive here, um, Real Animator Training. Let's enter the Real Animator Training Library. It's going to go into um, the the animation lectures archive okay uh so that's where you'll find it um in the real animated training library so uh it's been a pleasure giving this lecture to you um on behalf of amb animation so um amb is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for you know of all the books i've read of all the other online tutorials i have seen this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this, this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB and it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved 
a lot and it's more alive than ever and what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry, so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And uh, so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> So, are you going to join the library?